Alrighty guys, welcome back. This is your host Tiny Jester. We are going to be looking at strategies here for our scenario coming up here in Panzer Battles. The 11th Panzer on the Char River. Char River, Char River. Anyways, uh, this is your host Tiny Jester. Hopefully you enjoyed our overview of the standard combat series and kind of look at uh, some of the rules and how the game and the system works. I've been meaning to do this for the whole series, and hopefully um, hopefully you guys will get a chance to watch this, because if you're interested in Panzer Battles, the 11th Panzer on the Char River, um, you sh I would highly recommend you check out this book here, Panzer Battles. Obviously, same name. This is by Major General F.W. von Mellenthin. Chief of Staff of the 4th German Panzer Army. Uh, and basically this book talks about the experiences you're going to be delving into in this game. So uh, I highly recommend you check out this book. Uh, and you can pick it up. I think I got my copy on Amazon if I'm not mistaken. Um... Basically, uh, the, the one of the uh, staff officers for the Germans uh, wrote this, and uh, he was, you know, in uh, there and had, um, you know, all the information. And uh, so, anyways, I thought I would bring that to, to people's attention out there, uh, and you can look at it and check it out for yourself. All right, so back to what we were doing now. I meant to do that earlier and I forgot, so I wanted to throw that in for you guys that uh, might be interested in picking up this game. Alright, so uh, we're going to be playing this scenario. This is 2.3 Estate Farm 79. The playing area is just map B, which is on the table. Uh, first turn is turn 1, last turn is turn 2, so this scenario is only two turns long. Initiative is for the Soviet player. We're going to talk about that when we talk about the Soviets, um, the Soviet uh, um, uh, uh, strategies. That's what I meant to say. All right, so a special rule here. The first turn begins with the 11th Division Panzer chit being drawn automatically. So this will be the first chit. So the Germans 11th Panzer is going to get to go first. We know that ahead of time, uh, and um, there's only going to be three chits in the cup for each side. The Soviets get the first tank, fifth mech, the all infantry and cav, and one dummy. The Germans get the 11th Panzer, the non-11th Panzer, and a dummy. Uh, there is no non-11th Panzer in there, so the Germans are going to get to go first, and then they're going to have two dead turns after that. So they have, everything they have to do is in turn one. And then all player chits are put into each respective cup on turn two, which is really going to uh, decide the battle is what's going to happen probably on turn two. Uh, let's look at our victory conditions over there. If I can zoom this up a little bit. All right, so the Germans need to control State Farm 79 and Strozolkin at the end of turn number two. All right, so let's uh, let's zoom back out a little bit here and get you guys a better look of the battlefield. All right, we'll spend a few minutes and we'll talk about the Russian strategies here. So... Uh, the Russian strategies, all of their placement of their units, uh, there is a set uh, hex location for all of their units. So they have no um, variety in their setup. It will always be the same here uh, in the different hexes. So a lot of times it'll say within, you know, two hexes of this hex or whatever. But in this case, all the Russian units are set by the scenario. Uh, so, as a Russian player, we don't get much in the way of um, uh, strategies in positioning our units because we have to use the setup. Uh, we do have some reinforcements coming on in turn two. 
They're currently going to come off the North Edge map, and it's going to be the 216th Tank Brigade and the 8th Motorcycle Regiment are going to be our reinforcements. So, North is actually over on this side to the, uh, uh, I guess we can kind of spin this a little bit maybe, like that. So, North is over here. Uh, so, this would be West, this would be East, this would be South, down, down that way. All right. So this is our starting locations of our units. We do have three other units that are off the map this way a little bit, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even put them on the map because all they all they have to do is just move this way anyway. So um, we'll 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 just have to deal with those when we do. So first thing for the Soviets, <clears throat> you know, we don't get much strategy and or positioning. What we have to do is the rush or the German player needs to take over this hex here, which is State Form 79, and then the two village hexes, which are right here. So basically, these three hexes that the German player needs to take over in two turns. <sighs> what do we have going for us? Well, we have a lot of uh, exploit capable units, just like the German player does. We actually have one guard unit here. Uh, I think this is a guard unit. It is the red one. Um, I'm going to have to check on that, but I think it's part of the uh, the guards. Uh, but it's our only artillery unit, as you can see. But it does have a range of five and a power of three, attack strength of three. And it's in with some infantry, un uh, infantry unit there. And the rest of our units, I think, are uh, these these units are two tank units, two tank units, a tank unit, a tank unit, a uh, infantry unit, and then a um, armored car unit, I think is what that one is. The German player is going to be coming in from up here. And he only has two turns, and he needs to take over these three hexes. We don't have many units on the map for turn one, but like we talked about, we're going to get to activate all three, uh, two of our, we're going to get to activate all of our units because we'll have both of our first tank and five mech and our infantry and cavalry units in the cup. We'll have one dummy. The German player is going to get their one uh, 11th, Panzer Division, a non-11th Panzer Division, which there is no units that are not part of the 11th in this scenario, and one dummy. So they're only going to get to activate one time in the first uh, the first turn. So everything they do is going to have to be determined by that. Uh, for our for our side, since we're talking about the Russians, we have the initiative which means we have the air power All right somewhere come on yeah there we go so we have air power on our side which means every time we draw a non dummy chit we're gonna roll a die and uh, the numbers, I will tell you what the numbers are here in just a second. We're going to roll for our air support. If we roll a 1, 2, or 3, so we roll 1, 2, or 3, we get 0 air power strikes. If we roll a 4 or 5, we get 1. If we roll a 6, we get 2. These air support uh, have an attack strength of 4, which means if we roll 4 or less, it's going to DG all the units because it's a success. And then it's considered a yellow coated artillery, which means four or higher will cause a step loss. So if we can get a couple air attacks each turn, you know, every time we activate a, uh, a non dummy chit, we're going to get to roll for our planes to come in. And these are going to be crucial for us to try and get as many attacks as we can. And DGing all of their stacks of units, their big powerful stacks of uh, Germans coming in. If we can DG a bunch of those stacks, then uh, and even uh, possibly do some step losses to them, 
their strength will be at half. So we do have the air power on our side. The other thing is we do have quite a few reinforcements coming in in turn two. They could be coming in on the north edge. Most likely they're down this road or maybe down the middle or maybe on this road. It's hard to say at this point. Uh, depends how things go. The, the German player is going to be able to use the road to come right up. And he's going to have most of his units in this location. The other thing I haven't actually mentioned is there's another stack of Germans that come in from section C, which is right there. Basically, this road that comes up. So he's going to have a force coming in from the south and a force coming in from the west. So um, they are quite a ways away, as you can see, but they can use their road movement to move individual units down the road. And then in the movement phase, they can line up for their attacks. Again, they're going to get to go first, which means there's going to be a massive amount of units that they can line up and get their attacks on and probably overwhelm these few units that are in this location. We've got a tank unit back here. We've got a tank unit back here. we got an infantry unit that is off the map. It's, uh, you know, it's over here on a few hexes, and this one's over here a few hexes, and this one here. we got an AT unit and a couple other... Um, uh, two infantry units as well. So an AT unit and two infantry that we're going to be able to bring in off the map. Again, this this is only half the map. And I just figured there's no sense in me keeping the other half of the map on my table. Because I only need a couple rows to put those other units on here. So anyways, uh, air support is going to be vitally crucial for us. Because the Germans are going to be able to come in, line up with the road movement and their movement phase, and get all kinds of attacks up here. These units that are coming up from the south, they're going to be able to position themselves maybe in the flank, in the rear here. And our units are going to come from the top. So it's going to be super hard. The only advantage we really have is the, is the Russians is if, if in during uh, turn two, if we can get a couple of our uh, chits pulled before the Germans get their chits pulled, then we can get a couple good air attacks, maybe DG some of their units, use our one little artillery that we can use to try and DG some of their other units. Units that are DG'd are at half. Uh, let's see what it is. It is... Uh, their attack, barrage, defense, and movement rates are all halved. So, if they're attacking with five, you know, five, 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 that'd be fifteen firepower. They would be two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Uh, they lose their exploit capabilities, which we talked about throughout our series, and how important that is uh, for them to get multiple attacks in movement phase, combat phase, exploitation phase. If we can DG them, they lose that ability to use their exploitation phase. That's why our air power and our one and only artillery unit is going to be crucial to keeping these guys alive. Uh, and they have no zone of control, and they can also not road march as well uh, if you're DG'd. So that's, uh, I think, you know... Trying to withstand the first turn, get a couple chits to DG some of their powerful stacks, do you know, put them under DG counter, and hopefully, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's 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 going to be rough for I think for the Germans. I, I mean, rough for the uh, Soviets or uh, Russians because when the Germans do get all their chits in, you can see. They're going to actually, for the second turn, they're going to get a dummy counter. And then they're going to have one, two, three panzer 
11th division chits and a non-11th. Again, there is no non-11th. So they're going to have one dead chit. They're going to have another dead chit, with this, which is a dummy chit. But they're going to active. They're going to get to activate three times in the second turn. So if we can get uh, some of our units activated, get some air power, do some DGing on their units before they get to go, go, and go. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to be pretty rough. It is going to be pretty rough, I think. But you know, it's it's hard. It's hard to say. And that's why, you know, we're going to try it out and, and, and see, see how things play out here. And I, I think you could probably play this scenario 20 times. And 20 times it would be different based upon the chip pill system, which is why it's uh, so good to do. You can see the Germans do have quite a stack of units coming in, but we'll talk about them when uh, we're done here talking about the Russian setup here. So, again, we don't get much in the way of... Um, adjustment to our setup we just have to deal with what we can and then where we bring in our reinforcements you know um you know if if the germans make a big push here and bring in these units from the south and hit us in the flank as well now our reinforcements can come in from the side and kind of trap the germans between our two forces which would cause them trouble with retreats, cause them to have problems with retreats, and take step losses if they if we force them to retreat, or do we bring our units in down the road and trying to bolster our defenses here? It'll have to it'll be based upon how well the Germans do their very first turn. Well, let's look at the Russian setup now. Let's look at the German setup. Uh, sure. All right, so you see we have quite a few units coming in, and not only that, but we have several of them that are artillery units. So we have one... Two, two, I think it's a two or three that we have. No, three. So we have three units. That are artillery units. Oh, I'm sorry, four units. There we go, four of them. We have four artillery units, although all of them are pretty weak and short range. All of them have a range of three. We have one that's a two strength, a two strength, a three strength, and a three strength. So not great artillery units, but if we can get some of those to damage or DG some of the Russians, that would definitely help because, again, their defenses would go down. The problem is we talked about, and what I really wanted to show you guys in the last episode when we talked about things, is if we use the road movement, right, we're going to end up with, like, a single single file column of units and it's not going to give us much of a chance to do any kind of exploitation or anything it's just going to be a single line all the way back to the to the beginning but then when we do the movement phase we will be able to move up and get some uh get some good attacks i think um if we if we don't use the If we don't use the um, the road movement for all of our units, we're going to create a couple really powerful stacks. You can see we've got a couple units that are sevens, right? Seven attacks, and we have uh, some units that are six attack and seven attack. So we got three that are seven, three that are six. So that would be an eighteen attack. That's pretty darn powerful this would be a 21 attack if we had these three units stacked together so we got some pretty powerful stacks so we can move up some of our weaker units with with the road movement 
uh, the road march and then follow those up with our artillery units and then have during the movement phase you can see we have quite a bit of movement on these most of them are 12 we have a couple that are 14 and one that's 16 so we can get up there and the positioning again what I'm probably probably going to be trying to do is we can't overrun this hex because it's a village this is a village and this is a village and even though it's a state farm I think this is part of the village and then of course we have the the village of Solminsk Solminsk Sol 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 it's yeah whatever that is anyways uh, so we can't overrun these hexes here but we can overrun this is a pretty sitting duck here and then if we can bring some units around the side we do have this bulka that we have to worry about so you can't overrun over a bulka edge so we're gonna have to get some units maybe uh, slide that over a little bit maybe up through this pass and come around this way possibly and try and take care of his artillery unit would be a big help we don't want our units DG and then what we want to do is is put the hammer in the front and like I said trying to get some units to flank around and then we have the anvil coming in from the bottom and these guys are just going to come up and come down this road and cut over this way and we're going to have basically a two front two front assault with the uh, the main force coming in driving this way and coming off this way groups coming in from the south is going to come like that and we're going to try and pocket these russians right in there and they're going to have problems with retreats we do have a lot of very powerful units we're going to use that to our advantage try to get as much combat as we can force as many retreats and if the Russians can't get properly positioned, uh, we can force damage from them from retreats and hopefully push them back. And then once we have them pushed back, we're going to make a line there of units that's just going to envelop our, two, our location, three location hexes right there. And we're just going to hold those as best we can then and the Russians won't be able to mount hopefully after our crushing attack a, uh, a good counter offensive of course we do have to watch out for their barrages and stuff the other thing of note is we do have reinforcements coming in as the Germans we haven't looked at those guys yet but we do have somebody we have some units coming in on the second turn and a lot of these if I'm not mistaken are artillery units that have a huge range they have a range of 16 hexes and a power of four so what I'm planning on doing with these guys is creating a nice artillery park up on top of this hill right here and 16 hexes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 30 40 15 16 so basically anything all the way over to that edge of the map so basically anywhere in there they'll be able to barrage so we'll have a couple units stacked up here to help protect them We'll have these other units on top of the hill there and uh, hopefully uh, use their uh, tremendous firepower and range to decimate any of the German units or formations that are giving us problems. Oh, there's actually one that's a 20. <laughs> Huge range on these guys. And again, power of fours really good now of course they will only do a kill number on a six because they're not uh they're not yellow um banded uh units 
but still that's still pretty gosh darn good I'm going to have to check on that because they are yellow symbol. You can see their artillery symbol is yellow. I'm going to have to look and make sure that that is not count as a yellow banded unit. Uh, you can see that that is actually yellow there. And these guys actually might be um, with the strength of four. These guys actually might do a kill on a four. So these guys are these guys are going to be very valuable for the German player there. But yeah, that's our that's going to be our kind of our plan. We're going to come down the road. We're going to smash the front edge, whoop or some units around the side, and then uh, hold, holding these positions there. Our units coming from the south are going to come in and flank from behind. The German uh, the Russians won't be able to withstand our frontal assault. Hopefully they'll be pushed back. We'll end up getting these locations and then we're just going to set up a perimeter defense and hopefully the Russians won't be able to uh, mount much of a counterattack, especially with artillery up here on the hill. Uh, the only advantage of having the Russian, uh, the artillery on the hill, uh, the, the only thing that that helps is uh, you can spot up to six hexes away for an artillery unit, but that's not going to matter because that's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not far enough, right? It's not going to be far enough for us, but just thematically, it's going to be better for them to be up on that hill, I guess, kind of back out of the way, and they'll have plenty of range. I mean, I, we could leave them over here, you know, in the startup area if we wanted to because they have plenty of range. Um, as long as we have a unit... Right, any unit that's adjacent to an enemy. So as long as we're adjacent, we're within 16 spaces, the artillery could stay back there. But thematically, I'm going to move them up here on the hill because I think that would be super cool to have them up there on the hill just lobbing their artillery in on the uh, Russians over there. So that's, uh, that's the plan for the German player. And we'll see how it goes in the next episode. So again, we're going to be playing uh, the Panz uh, German 11th Panzer Division shit is first pulled. But we'll show you how to set up the cups and everything when we start up the scenario. Well, that's going to be our game plan for uh, the German player. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. So thanks everyone for coming on out and watching our intro strategies talking uh what we have and uh, hopefully uh hopefully we'll get uh, things on uh show on the road and show you some actual uh gameplay so thank you everyone for watching this series and we'll see you all for the start of the actual scenario next time thanks for watching